Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kevin, and we are Inside China Business. The Inflation Reduction Act in 2022 included large subsidies for U.S. companies to develop a solar panels industry in the United States. Officials in the Biden administration said that this was an important milestone in reshoring the solar panel industry from China and from other Asian countries. Industry insiders, however, say that the subsidies aren't nearly enough to make a difference. This is because of China's immense advantages at the very top end of the supply chain for manufacturing solar panels. The question that the Wall Street Journal is asking here is, can the United States break China's grip on this industry? And the problem is that everything China does in solar panels is simply less expensive than anywhere else. The raw materials, the processing, the labor, and even the electricity. And these cost and production advantages become even more clear if we understand how solar panels are made. One of the most important parts of solar panels is polysilicon. Polysilicon is very high quality silicon. The manufacture of the silicon is the first big step in building solar panels. It requires the most energy and money because the equipment required is very expensive. It also requires very high temperatures. Just 20 years ago, China was nowhere to be seen in the solar panel industry. It was completely dominated at that time by Japan, the United States, and Europe. But in 2023, China produced 91% of the polysilicon needed for solar panels. The United States has import bans on most polysilicon made in China. So manufacturers there have to get their polysilicon from other countries more expensively. Then comes the next big part of the process. The polysilicon is melted in furnaces, then cooled into big crystals, which are called ingots. Then the ingots are sawed into slices called wafers. And here, China makes 97% of all the ingots and wafers. For ingots and wafers, the United States doesn't make any. And again, this part of the manufacturing process requires very high temperatures and lots of electricity. The next important ingredient is sand. Sand is used to make the containers to melt the silicon. These containers are called crucibles. Most of the high court sand used to make the crucibles does come through the United States from North Carolina, but that is all shipped to China where they have monopoly on making the crucibles. China makes almost all the crucibles in the world. The next step is the solar cell manufacturing. The solar cell is the device of the solar panel that converts sunlight into electricity. China at this stage controls 80% of the solar cell market. The United States has no solar cell manufacturers. The assembly of the solar panels themselves is actually the simplest part of the process and it's widely dispersed around the world. There are many companies and many countries that can assemble solar panels. But even here, China has 83% of all the solar panel assembly in the world by volume. And the US has less than 2%. China's manufacturing centers for the solar panel industry are in regions in China where there is a lot of coal and there is already a lot of solar panel power installed. 
Electricity prices across China are already 30% of the global average. In these parts of China, it's even lower. You also have the issue too that the labor costs in China are much lower than anywhere in North America or in Europe. The Inflation Reduction Act did provide companies a lot of subsidies for anyone wanting to build manufacturing capacity in the United States. But experts and executives inside the U.S. solar industry say the subsidies aren't nearly enough. The high cost of inflation the high cost of production and the raw material sourcing costs wipe out the value of all these subsidies. And these experts do agree that the United States can catch up quickly in the technical know-how required to compete in this industry. The problem though is the cost and that without very high tariffs on Chinese solar panels, they still cannot compete effectively and these tariffs would have to be sufficiently high that it would drive up the cost of solar panels by 60% in the United States. So there are problems all around here then. In order to meet these zero emissions, zero carbon goals that we've established for ourselves in the US and Europe, we're gonna need a lot of wind, a lot of solar, and a lot of battery technology and China simply has monopolies on most of those key supply chains. So if our idea is to go to zero carbon, low emissions, and do so without China, we have to get very busy very quickly, spending a lot of money to develop the technologies. Not merely assembly plants, but raw material sources, logistics, refining and processing, things that require a lot of electricity, a lot of labor, and for our perspective at least, very high costs. Thanks for watching. Be good.